Today on Another World. You know who I am, don't you? Huh? Whatever you're doing with him, don't stop. He was screaming when I got home. Did you go out? I went out for a little while. Can you believe he ever fit into this? Well, I never saw him when he was that size. You're trying to warn me that Mitch Blake is not going to allow this adoption to take place, aren't you? From all you've told me, yes, it's a very good possibility. And that's exactly why I wanted you over here. I want you to block any move he might conceivably make. I want to adopt Matthew. All right. I guess I just wasn't thinking. I didn't know I would wind up hurting everybody. All the people that I care for. Jim, you don't expect you ever to forgive me. <laughs> But please, try to understand. And now... The continuing story of another world. Cory, honey, drink your milk. We're going to be late. Hey, what you doing? It's here. Drinking my milk without being told. What does it look like? No, seriously. I thought you had a class this morning. Did? I used to. Was it camp for today or something? <sighs> Not exactly. I dropped the class. You dropped it? Well, what do you mean dropped it? I thought that that class was a requirement. Yeah. There was no way I was going to pass English Lit this time around, so I figured it'd be better to drop it than to fail it. Could have gotten some help for you. I had help. You did? Yeah. Sally Frame tried, and she's a brain. Maybe she was the wrong person to help you. Maybe you should have asked Jamie or Mac. No way! Why not? I don't want them to think that I'm just a dumb jock. Cut that out. I won't let you put yourself down like that. Oh, Clarice, I'm not putting myself down. It's just that I... Daddy! Well, hello, big fella. How's my boy doing? I missed you so much, Daddy. I'm gonna show you... Divine, monsieur. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, let's uh, take a little break. Sure. Okay. That bad, huh? Your song, no, uh -huh. it was fine. It was uh, lovely. Yeah, sure. I mean it, really. Oh, come on. Come on, that's a good try, but you didn't hear a word of it. I know. I've been watching you. You have not been here uh, in spirit, at least, since I started. I'm sorry. You're right. You wouldn't be thinking about Jerry Grove now, would you? Could be. Come on. What are you worried about? He's going to be fine. He's okay. That's not it. Well, then what is it? I'm responsible for what happened to him. I almost caused him to die. What hit this place? Well, if you can believe it, just two very tiny children and two adults. It's amazing how four people can mess up a place. But I think our little Amanda is the biggest messer-upper. Mm-hmm. Was I like that when I was a kid? <laughs> you were messy enough for four children. Oh, thanks. Oh, boy. No, 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 no. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. All right, all right. Don't get touchy. I like it like that. It's a piece oh, of artwork. Oh, sure. Work. Oh, work. <laughs> Besides, we should sit down and have a cup of tea like normal people. Oh, that sounds good. Good. I want to talk to you anyway. What about? About Mitch. What about Mitch? Thanks. He feels that he doesn't see Matthew as much as he'd like to. He can see Matthew whenever he wants to. All he has to do is call and tell me when. Well, he doesn't feel comfortable with the arrangement. Well, I don't know what I can do to make him feel more comfortable. It's not you. It's Mac. He said that? He said that he wasn't comfortable with him. 
I don't doubt that. What else did he say? Well, he also said that there was a lot of tension between them. Yeah, that's true. That's been happening ever since Max said that he wanted to um, adopt Matthew. How do you feel about that? I don't think it's right. That way Mitch wouldn't be able to participate in his own son's life. And you think it's right for Mitch to do that? Well, of course I do. Matthew is his son. I can't deny him that privilege. <sighs> I know. No wonder if Mac and Mitch are both so upset. Well, it's a very uncomfortable situation. But I don't know what I can do about it. I wish I could make a choice between one or the other of them, but I can't do that. Certainly doesn't help my situation with Mac. I hope you're not letting this come between the two of you. I don't want it to. I love Mac. I don't want him to be hurt by anything, but... But? Are you trying to tell me something? Only that there are no simple solutions. Things don't always work out in life the way you want them to. Look, Rachel, you can't let this thing go on any longer, you know? If you do, something bad is gonna happen. I know that, Mom. I'm as worried about the situation as you are, but I don't know what to do about it. All I'm trying to do is protect Matthew's rights. He needs a father. And right now, Mitch is his legal father. Yes, but Mac loves him. Well, honey, you, you have got to protect and guarantee the baby's future. Oh, come on, Mom. You know there aren't any guarantees in life. You can't trust anybody in life except yourself. All my life, you've been the only person I could trust. Not even Mac. I mean, look at what Mac did while I was on trial. Well, that's why you have to protect yourself. I mean, the way things stand now. They're in limbo. And maybe it's better that way. This way, Matthew can have both Mac and Mitch. Well, you have got to fix it so that Mitch can see Matthew. He can see him whenever he wants to. Well, honey, I know that, but it doesn't solve the problem with Mac. I mean, you have to make it legal. Brian could do it for you. You mean a, a visitation right? Sir? Well, yeah. I mean, that way, Mac wouldn't have to be here. Brian could spell out what Mitch's rights are. I mean, it's better if it's all legal. I'm surprised you're going to bat for Mitch. Well, it kind of surprises me, too. I can't forget that he came between you and Mac, but Matthew was his son. I hate to see a father separated from his child. Look, I'll just get my stuff and get out. I really had no idea anybody was home. Hello, Larry. How you hey. doing? Okay. How's school treating you? So-so. Look, I gotta get going. Well, call you off at school. No, I'll have to stay with Daddy. Come on, fella. Look, why don't you go with me, all right? No. Yeah, no, look, your right. daddy's gonna be leaving in a minute anyway. Okay? Come on. See you, Larry. Bye, my Clarice. Right. You seem to be doing real good. McCoy? Yeah. He is, isn't he? What's wrong with him? What do you think's wrong with him? He misses his daddy. I'm sorry. Oh. I'll bet you are. I love Corey. Well, sure you do. It's just that he's no match for the arena. All those swell folks at the... Down there, they don't give you any chance to think about him. I think about Corey all the time. Sure you do. You haven't come to see Corey once since you left. Clarice, I just thought, you know, it'd be easier this easier way. Easier? On who? On you, that's who. You're, you don't have to listen to him crying for nightmares night after night. Who, Corey? Well, I'm not talking about Lee. Well, isn't there anything you can do for him? Well, I'm trying. I think it's something he needs for you to do for him. To hold him or to hug him like he used to or to tuck him in at night. Maybe that would help. Look, I, I, I didn't mean for it to be like this. 
No, you thought you could just walk out and nobody would even notice? Well, that's not the way it happens. Not when people love you. Do me a favor, then you just better get out of my life because this hurts too much. Maybe someday I hope you understand all of this. All I know is that you walked out and that you don't love me anymore. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Clarice. I really. you over here today well i decided i'd surprise you and take advantage of mom and come over and see if you wanted to take a coffee break with me how sweet ada's not working no she's going in late hmm, well that was very kind of her mm -hmm. i thought so oh i'll send for another cup the coffee's just freshly made no no it's okay in a minute i'm not wrong in thinking there's something specific on your mind am i no you're not wrong you're never wrong you always seem to be able to read my mind I like to believe that's because we're so finely tuned into each other. That's probably it. So what you want to talk to me about? Well, um, as I said, Mom was over, and, uh, you know, we got to talking. So she said something that's worrying you? Well, since you seem to always read my mind, you probably know what I'm going to say, so I don't have to tell you. Mm, hardly that. Come on. You tell me first. Well, Mom has pretty strong feelings about Mitch seeing Matthew. Feelings which way? Well, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but Mitch hasn't been over to see Matthew in quite some time. Well, I saw him over there the other day. Yeah, but that was the first time in a long time. No, you mentioned to me that he was over there a day or so before. Well, anyway... Perhaps he's very busy getting things organized over the sporting life. Well, I think that's part of it. You seem very sure of that. I think he's not very comfortable coming over to the house. I think he feels like he's intruding, and I think he's made a conscious decision to stay away. Good. That's very wise. I think that's best all around, Rachel. Well, maybe it is for you. But Matthew is his son. He misses him. That may well be. But, Mac, you can't blame him for wanting to spend time with his son. No, I don't blame him. I still think in the long run, it's better if he doesn't. Better for whom? For us or for him? For us. Rachel, can't you see this arrangement is not going to work out? I agree with you. Good. Then, wouldn't you say that the next logical step is to let me legally adopt Matthew. I don't see how that will solve the problem for Mitch. I'm not trying to solve Mitch's problem. What do you suggest we do? Well, that we see Brian, and we have Brian draw up some sort of papers or something. Yeah, such as what? Well, visitation papers or something like that. I see. Mac, don't you see? It would take all the awkwardness away from this situation. We'd know when Mitch was coming. We could plan for it. Everybody would feel comfortable, especially Mitch. Why don't you want me to adopt Matthew? Mac, it's not a question of my not wanting you to adopt Matthew. Isn't it? Oh, come on, Mac. We've been all through this before. We have to take Mitch's feelings into consideration here. Well, let me ask you this. If Mitch were agreeable to my adopting Matthew, then you wouldn't have any objection, would you? No, of course not. 
not very bright for you to be seen here, you know. It doesn't matter. I'll be the judge of that. Not no more, you won't. And what do you mean by that? I just said it doesn't matter. Mr. Steele, you better explain your reasoning to me, and uh, I don't think I have to tell you. It better be good. I've been fired. You've been what? I said I've been fired. What happened? All I know is that frame kid came down the docks, told me to clear out. That's... Well, I'll be a... So what are you going to do about it? I wouldn't have got fired except that I was trying to help you guys out. For which you were paid most generously, might I remind you? Okay, sure, but I'm out of a job. Now, what are you going to do about that? Relax. <laughs> You're still on the payroll. Yeah, but for how long? Oh, there are a number of things you can do for us. Yeah, well, like what? I want you to tail somebody for me. Yeah? Who's that? Blaine Ewing. Blaine Ewing? But I thought she was your lady. She is. Well, why do you want her tailed? I'll ask the questions around here, okay? Okay, sure. And while you're at it, I want you to keep an eye on her brother, Larry, too. Yeah, that's absolutely true. If Jordan hadn't been suspicious that there was something going on between you and Jerry, Jerry would not be in that hospital. All right. So the question is now, what do I do? One suggestion? Please. You better try and patch it up with Jordan real quick. And you better hope that it's not too late. Too late? Why would it be too late? Because people like Jordan, once betrayed, or once they even think that they've been betrayed. They don't forget very easily. And they never forgive. You think he'll try to go after Jerry again? I don't know. I really can't predict. Well, I gotta go warn Jerry. Have you been hearing anything that I have said to you? Well, I'm sorry. I'm worried about him. He could be... I know. Okay, yeah. He could be in danger. But we're talking about your skin here. It's your life. I don't care. I don't care. I've got to get to that hospital and hospital. Warn him now. Oh, no. Come on. You can't go to that hospital. Are you crazy? I have to go, Melissa. I can't know something like this and, 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 and not even tell him about it. It's my fault. I'm responsible for it. Blaine. Be real careful. You know who I am, don't you? Huh? Don't you? Whatever you're doing with him, don't stop. He was screaming when I got home. Did you go out? Yep, I took advantage of Mom, and uh, I went out for a little while. Can you believe he ever fit into this? Well, I never saw him when he was that size. Something else, eh? Oh, I still think he is, don't you? No doubt about it. Right? You see that? Mm-hmm. What's she doing with those clothes, huh? Oh, she's packing them up and putting them away in the attic because he's outgrown them all. Mind if I see that? What, this? Yeah. Sure. This is yours? Yeah. Mind if I hang on to this? No, not at all. I remember when Jamie was little, I used to... Uh, no, when he was all grown up, I used to go up into the attic... And I used to take out all of his baby things and try to remember what it was like when he was that small. Don't mind if I hang on to it, do you? No, not at all. So, how's work? How's work? It's, uh... It's moving along. Liz, uh, would you call my house? Just say... No, wait a minute. I'd rather talk to Rachel myself. Never mind. I'll call. No, no. No trouble. Thank you. I've got to take him down and feed him. I think he's starved. Oh, would you get that for me, please? Corey Residence? Hello. Yes, 
Yes, is anybody there? Hello? So how you feeling? I feel like I haven't quite landed yet. All in good time. Just land on your feet, all right? Yeah. Larry, what's new? Well, Jerry, I think I'm really on to something. About Jordan Scott? Who else? I went in his office the other day unexpectedly. And you should have seen his nose buried in this little book. What kind of book? Uh, it was just a little notebook, but boy, was he upset when he thought I saw it. He stashed it quick. Larry, that sounds suspicious. Well, you bet it does. Uh, but it contains something real important to our Mr. Scott. What? Well, uh, I don't get you. Look, I'm going to get my hands on that book, Jerry. Why? Why? Are you kidding? I want to know what's inside of it. I've got a sneaking suspicion it contains the missing pieces we're looking for. Yeah? Yeah, like uh, what happened to Bud and Buzz, why they died. And your mother? Jordan kept records. And I just bet he did. I don't know, Larry. All I know is I'm going to slip in while he's not in his office and I'm going to get a good look at that book. I just want you to hang in there. Maybe next time I see you, I'll have those answers we're looking for. You're real pleased to see me, aren't you? I'm always glad to see you. Sit down. Thanks. You seem down. Yeah? Yeah. Usually when you've got hockey practice, you're a lot more cheerful. Is there anything wrong? You're not getting kicked off the team, are you? No, nothing like that. Just down. Well, is it a deep, dark secret why, or can you tell me? I had to drop that lip class. You know the one you were helping me with? Why? I thought you were doing real well. Didn't do so well on the test. I failed it. <clears throat> After that, I figured the best thing to do would be to just drop the class. Why? Well, because I can't afford another fail. I mean, I, if I want to play hockey. That's right. If you get another fail, you get dropped. Right. right. I'm really sorry I wasn't any help for you. It's not your fault. You can't help it if I have a if I have a thick skull. Oh, uh, will you cut it out? You know, I don't like you at all when you talk like that about yourself. Well, I can't lie to myself. I mean, I couldn't handle the class, and all the coaching in the world wasn't going to change that fact. Actually, I'm kind of relieved now that it's over. Yeah, I can tell. It's not all that's bugging you, is it? What is it? Clarice and Larry? You mean they still haven't made up? It's a mess. Well, what happened? Well, Larry came home this morning thinking everybody was going to be gone. He said he had to pick up some clothes. And you were there? Everybody was there. Everybody was running late this morning. Then there was a big scene, right? Corey just grabbed onto him, told him how much he missed him, didn't even want to go to school. Oh. And Sally, it was tough. I just wish I could say a magic word or something and, and, and everybody would be back together again, you know? Oh, hey. I wish you could, too. But look, you can't go getting yourself depressed like this. Can't help it. I'm trying, but it's just, it's just very, very hard. I know. I have this, this knack of getting involved with people. That's because you care about people. I think it's neat. Neat? Yeah. I don't think so. Why? Every time I get involved with somebody, I mess everything up. Oh, hey, look, I gotta get the hockey. Last thing I need is the coach yelling at me. Uh, hey, 
And do you think I can go and watch with you? You really want to? Yeah. Why? Well, I kind of got the impression you didn't like hockey too much. Well, I don't think I gave hockey a very fair chance. But I'm ready to now. Can I go with you? Yeah. I'll let you. Good. Let's go. You know, I'm curious. About what I'm doing? No, no. I understand why you want to adopt Matt here. I just wonder at this sudden haste. Well, I don't think it's sudden at all. Did uh, something happen? No, not really. I just finally woke up to the fact that the situation is potentially explosive. It is absolutely intolerable to me and fast becoming intolerable to everybody else, I guess. Yes, I can imagine. I don't think that it can ever be tolerable again until the whole thing is worked out legally. I mean, Brian, Rachel and I were married for months before Matthew was born, and we are still married. I simply do not see any reason other than his own self-interest why Mitt should be allowed to force Matthew to go through the rest of his life as an illegitimate child. Well, it never hurts to get the situation clarified legally. But uh, one question, Mac. What? How does Rachel feel about what you're doing? I'm sure Rachel wants what's best for Matthew, as I do. Well, I'm sure that's true. And I'm sure that what I'm doing is the best move that I can make for the baby's future. What about Mitch Blake? What about him? Well, have, uh, have you asked him about uh, his agreement to adopt Matthew? No, I haven't asked him, but uh, he's told me he doesn't agree. Well, then do you think it's wise to proceed with this uh, until you get Mitch's agreement? Brian, at this point, I couldn't care less what Mitch wants, thinks, or does. I mean, I think I've been very considerate about everyone involved in this situation. I think I've been taken advantage of, of, and I am fed up with it. I think that I've been more than generous about that man. Well, I can't argue with you there. But, Mac, I have to say it. I believe that you are behaving a little irrationally. That may be true. But I'm determined that Matthew is going to be protected. I will not allow him to be used as the way he's being used now, and I won't allow him to be pulled back and forth between us forever. I can understand that, but still, you've got to be realistic. That's what I'm trying to be. Mac, listen to me. Now, if Mitch allows you to adopt Matthew, he'd be signing away all his rights to his son. Well, it's not true. Rachel says he's got to have visitation rights. All right, he'll have visitation rights. I just want the whole thing down in black and white. That's what I want. I have no doubt about what you want, but I have to repeat it. You're reacting emotionally, Mac. You're trying to warn me that Mitch Blake is not going to allow this adoption to take place, aren't you? Well, from all you've told me, yes, it's a very good possibility. And that's exactly why I wanted you over here. I want you to block any move he might conceivably make. I want to adopt Matthew so that he has a mother and father who were legally married at the time of his birth, and I don't care what legal move you've got to make in order to get that done. Right, I'll see what I can do. And I, want, I have to warn you. I want it done now. I want it done just Mac, as fast as you can do it. Do Mac, you understand? Mac, will you listen to me? I've already promised that I will do what I can. I'll get the papers in motion as soon as I get back to my office. Thank you, Brian. I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize for putting pressure on you like this. It's just that I have very strong reasons to believe this situation is becoming extremely urgent. Yes, I know. I'm very aware of that, Mac. I... I just hope... That... What? Well, that you've thought through this whole thing very carefully. I wouldn't want you to make a serious error. Oh, I have. Believe me, Brian, I have thought it through very seriously. And I'm convinced what I am doing is the only thing that can prevent a terrible situation. 
I'll see what I can do. Well, I must say, you are an awfully good hockey player. Now, Sally, you know nothing about hockey. I know. How can you tell? I couldn't. <laughs> but I sat next to this guy who really knew hockey, and he said you were an excellent player. Yeah, no kidding. I'm serious. I was real proud of you. And I was kind of sad. I don't know why sad. Because I know how bad I'd be at it. Don't tell me you want to play hockey now. What if I do? I think you're crazy. Why? Uh, because hockey's no place for women. It's, it's a dangerous sport. Now, if it's okay for you to play a dangerous sport, why wouldn't it be okay for me? I mean, after all, girls can do anything guys can do. Yeah, right. I won't argue that point, but... Well, come on, tell me. I want to know. I just wouldn't want any girl that I'm going out with playing hockey. Why? Wouldn't I look cute with a black eye? You'd look cute anyway. Thanks. That's not it. Well, what is it then? Come on, tell me. I don't know. I'll bet I know. Well, tell me. I want to know. You might get jealous. Jealous? Uh -huh. Me of what? Of me hanging around all those jocks. Maybe. You know you would. Come on and admit it. Well, it might bug me. You know, those guys are a bunch of animals. <laughs> they so get I've to be heard. pretty rowdy sometimes. Are you like that when you're around the hockey team? I don't know. I'll bet I know something about you, Lee Hobson, that nobody else knows. What's that? You're shy. I'm not shy. Yes, you are shy. And when you get right down to it, you're sensitive, too. Yeah. at all. You're late. What are you talking about? Obviously, you've forgotten. Forgotten what? You were supposed to meet me at the hospital at four o'clock. Uh, look, Mom, I'm, I'm really sorry. I did completely <clears throat> forget I was supposed to meet you. I'll say you did. It's all my fault, Mrs. Frame. Your fault? Yeah, I was kind of depressed this afternoon, and Sally was uh, just trying to cheer me up. Oh. Is that what she was doing? Mother! We were just sitting. You were doing a very good job of it, too, Sally. Mother, please. Um, I think I'm gonna get home. Nice seeing you, Mrs. Frame. Sorry if I got you in the hot water. It's not your fault. I forgot to meet my mother. Yeah, it is. Look. It isn't. Forget it. So I forgot the deal. You're just trying to make me feel good. What's wrong with that? Come on, I'll walk you to the door. <clears throat> and, uh, don't worry. See you soon. Okay. All right. Bye. Good luck. Thanks, I need it. Sally? I think we'd better have a talk. Is that really necessary, the way you treated us? I'm sorry. I really am. I didn't mean to react that way. React? Don't you mean overreact? I said I'm sorry. Do you remember a pact we made before I even agreed to come back to Bay City? Yes, I remember. You it's promised just... me you were not going to interfere in my life anymore. And that you were going to start treating me like an adult. I'm aware of that, Sally. And I'm trying to do just that. I honestly am. You do believe that, don't you? I guess so. Honey, I'm your mother. It's only natural that I would worry. Especially when you break a promise. I said I was sorry, didn't I? Yes. 
Shall we call it even then? As soon as we get something clear. I'm listening. Mom, I know the reason you react or overreact in situations like this is because you love me. Well, I'm glad to see that you realize that. I do. I do, but still, Mom, it doesn't give you the right to try and manipulate my relationships with other Honey, people. Honey, I'm not. Oh. All right. All right. Maybe... Maybe I was guilty of that. But just a little. I was worried that... Sally, just how serious is the, your relationship with Lee? How serious? Uh, it's not serious at all. How could it possibly be? I've only been out with Lee a couple times. Well, it certainly looked serious. I like him. He's really a nice guy. And I might even like him a lot, Mother. You should be happy for me. Well, I would be, but I But just... what? Why aren't you? Isn't this happening a little fast? What is happening fast? All we did was kiss. Well, it did look serious. Oh, Mother, you are reading things into a simple kiss that just aren't there. What is this? Are you trying to break Lee and I up already? Oh, Sally, how can you say a thing like that? Oh, well, that? that is what you did with Andy and I, isn't it? I know that you blame me for... for that relationship breaking up. But, Sally, it was for your own good. Oh, right. For my own good. You knew I loved him and you couldn't wait to break us up. You were too young. Sally. Anyone who... who would take a young girl off to New York City has nothing in mind He for loved me. So what if we had run off? We would have made it. If I survived. Well, maybe. But what kind of life would you have had? <sighs> Sally. Sally, I love you. I don't want to see you hurt. I want only the best for you. Oh, honey, the last thing in the world I want is to hurt you. I know that. I just want things to be good between us. I don't want to repeat of Chicago. Neither do I. Okay. So we're both agreed on that. Look, maybe we're just going to have to work extra hard at it. Game? Of course I'm a game. And I promise that I will really try to back off a little. And not to worry so much. And not to worry so much. <laughs> if I can. It's a deal. Oh, I... I couldn't come here sooner. I wanted to. I was just afraid that if Jordan... They shouldn't be here. Dangerous. No, it's okay. Somebody's covering for me. Uh, dangerous. You must stay away from Jordan. Now, he, he won't know I'm here, Jerry. I wouldn't do that to you. Oh, tired. So t tired. I know what. I know. Uh, just rest, okay? Mm. Just, I want to tell you something. This whole thing, it's all my fault. I know that. I don't know what I can say to you to make it up to you. If I knew what to do, I'd... Jerry, I'm sorry. I never dreamed you'd do anything like this. Don't, Blaine, please. It's okay. No, it's not. It's not okay. Nothing's okay. 
everything is the worst it could possibly be. Don't you understand that? No. No. Jerry, I'm sorry. When I got into this whole mess, I guess I just wasn't thinking. I didn't know I would wind up hurting everybody. All the people that I care for. All the people that mean so much to me. You don't know what you're saying. I... Jerry. Jerry, I don't expect you ever to forgive me. <laughs> but please, try to understand. Please, try. It's okay, you just sleep. Sleep and get well. But I'm gonna tell you something. Right here and now, whether you can hear me or not, that doesn't matter. I promise you, Jerry, I am going to get Jordan Scott for what he's done to you. I'm going to make sure that he never gets away with anything ever, ever again. I don't quite know how I'm gonna manage that right now. But I promise you I'm going to do it. I'm going to get him, Jerry. For both of us. For all of us. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Another Work.